working. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Hello, hola, Hamburg. Nice to meet you all. Um, I want you to enjoy my journey of my PhD. My goal tonight is that you learn three surprising facts that I also learned doing my research. Now try to guess what are you seeing. I will give you some hints, don't worry. Work all night and I drink a rum. Normally people guess this is an egg and it's some sperm. I have to give you some hints. A sperm move rotating the tail. They will never pull by the front. This is other type of cells. Now they're fluorescent, that's why you see them in green. Here they're not happy, they don't have any idea where to go at all. But once you give them what they need, they move like crazy. So tonight I'm not going to talk to you about sex, at least not on the bone or whatever the name it is. I'm going to talk to you about some awesome facts of the brain, the human brain and the mammal brain. Around many years ago, um, I started my research and I basically knew similar to what you know now about the brain. It's a very interesting organ, um, awesome, it's compound by a specific types of cells called neurons, and I imagine the neurons as a circle where the nucleus is, a tail, very long axons and some funny hair that is called dendrites. But they're basically, um, some of them are looking like this and they change shape during development. And what I get to know is that there are a bunch of neurons in our brain and I was very surprised because 100 billion neurons have to fit inside this skull. So that's awesome. And they're not alone, they're also surrounded by other cells that help them stay in their position. So there are more than 100 billion. But with numbers, I cannot really grasp 100 billion. Eh? So just for you to have a picture, nowadays we are 7 billion humans on Earth. So we have around 14 times more that in our brain. And it's not only that. Humans, we are not able to organize and connect with each other. But neurons, they do. They connect with each other and they make this body function. So try to beat that. It's like, they're cool, they're very surprising. In a specific part of the brain that is the one I study, they are organizing rows and in arrow. Um, yeah, columns and rows. So imagine trying to organize one billion humans in a specific positions and work in a specific task. We all do that right now here. So I hope you remember that. <laughs> Something even more awesome is that in a specific part of the brain that allows us to manage language and even if you don't do it so perfectly, um, that's the area and also will allow you to do some reasoning and main decisions, you will have eight cells, so 80% of the cells will fire information. They are called, called the excitatory cells and only 20%, so two of them, will filter and organize them. For those of you who doesn't know Bill Nye and deGrasse Tyson, they are very um, outspoken scientists. They are doing scientific communication from USA. They are standing up um, for mitigation of climate change, which is something that Trump, I mean, I don't like to point fingers or talk bad about others, but uh, Trump or their team are kind of screwed it up in that sector, so you should watch them. And neurons are similar. You have a big group, 80%, 
firing random information that doesn't make any sense and you don't need, and only two are gonna make things in position and make things work. These 20% are called the inhibitory neurons and are the ones that I have the privilege to work with. Something even more surprising, and that's the third fact I wanted to talk to you about, is that the 80% of cells, the ones that are always excited and repeating information, they are developed in the area where they remain the whole time. But this 20%, that needs to be in a specific areas to control the 80, they are born far, far away. And those are the ones you saw moving at the beginning of the presentation. That's right. Neurons, at the beginning of the brain development, interneurons, they have to migrate. A distance similar of us walking from Leipzig to Berlin. Yes, and not only they have to move, they have to reach the perfect position to control the rest eight. If we don't achieve that, we will have some problems like autism, epilepsy, and many others. And how do they reach that? Because they cannot communicate. They don't have a map. They're just neurons, and as you saw them, they're just randomly going around. They do it because they um, read the environment. It's a system similar to a key and a lock. They will have receptors and secreted substances, and when they bump with each other because the tissue is very dense, you just saw the green fluorescent ones, but that's full of tissue around that you could not see because it was not fluorescent, and they will bump with each other, and with this key and lock, they will say, yeah, that's the way. No, get out of here, wrong track. And that's how they reach their final position. As you can tell by now, I really love interneurons. Luckily, because I had to commit a few years to them. And I love them so much that I start seeing them everywhere. So imagine you are an exchange student and you have to do something very challenging and complicated you are new in Germany, was the first thing you can guess? Bureaucracy. I had to do some simple documents. I don't know if you have ever seen Asterix and Obelix trying to do some paperwork. I recommend you to do it because it's very funny. That's how I felt. I was clueless. I had to go here, I had to go there. And then I said, wait a minute, this is like being an intern neuron. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I already, I already did it. I did it when I was an embryo. Yeah, the big difference is that um, here I had some hints and I can talk. And I am from Venezuela, so there the paperwork is even crazier. The biggest difference is that in Germany it actually works for something. So I succeeded and I was like, yes, yes and all thanks to the interneurons according to me. Also, another big challenge that maybe you know, maybe you don't. As a researcher, only 70% of graduates, well actually, 70% of graduates from a doctor um, a study will find or have to quit research and find another job because there are not enough jobs for all of us there. So 70 to 30, only 30% 30 of us will have the privilege to continue some research. And of course, I was again like 70 to 30, it's like 80 to 20, it's like interneurons. <laughs> I can do it, yes! So I really hope I'm on those three, I'm almost there, I never lose hope. Don't worry, but if interneurons did it, then once again, I hope I can do it too. So as a take home message, I just want you to know, interneurons migrate from very far away places and reach a very specific and relevant position to make things into sense and shut up crazy excitatory neurons. And they tune the cortex and allow us to feel emotions, to think, to connect, so if they do it, we can also do it. We can migrate, 
we can reach our goal, whatever it is, and we can tune our life. Thank you very much.